Hello, I'm here with Sue Anderson. She is the Community Education Coordinator and Advocate for Voices of Hope, and I'd like to welcome you here with us today, Sue. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you in this kind of different format this time and share a little bit about Voices of Hope. So, as Jean said, my name is Sue Anderson. I always talk, first of all, about the fact that I do have the best job at Voices of Hope because being the community education coordinator, getting lots of opportunity to come out and meet um, people in the community, talk about the agency, the services that we provide, the issues that we work with. And then the advocacy piece of my position is really the opportunity to provide those direct services to victims and survivors. And that is very much, very much an honor to walk alongside people. So for those of you who might not be aware, Voices of Hope is a Domestic Violence Sexual Assault Program, serves Lincoln and Lancaster County. All of our services are free of charge and confidential. We provide those services to all genders. So we really talk about being a place to empower people who have experienced relationship violence, sexual assault, stalking, and other forms of abuse. And then our services are also available for significant others. So really, um, the unfortunate reality is all of us are touched by these types of crimes and know someone who's been impacted by that. So services are for for all of us. I would want to for your past generous support of the agency, the Unitarian Church and membership has always been so supportive of Voices of Hope in a number of ways. Um, and we really appreciate it and really value that. Just perhaps to highlight just a couple of our services that we provide for some who might not be aware. Main services is our 24-hour crisis line, always available, <clears throat> always having that trained advocate uh, available to things that are happening. Also doing 24-hour advocacy in the hospitals and the court system, drop-in services um, in the, in the um, office when, when, when the office is open. And then really that that community education training piece of going out into the community and providing information about these issues to other community members, first responders, kind of gatekeepers who work alongside us doing this work. What else I should tell you right now, people come to us in a variety of different ways. We have, as I mentioned, the, the crisis line, which is often a, one of that first, first contact that folks will have with us. We do have cooperative agreements with the police department and the the sheriff's department. So when someone is lodged in jail for domestic assault or, or violation of a protection order or sexual assault, um, law enforcement does contact one of our enhanced advocates and gives us information. So that would be one of those times that we would do outreach and make a call out to that victim, to that survivor, to talk about safety planning, to offer different services, to see how we might be of help to them. So we do have a lot of community partners um, that we work with being involved in the threat assessment team, serving on a sexual assault team, coordinating response teams for domestic violence as well. This current situation that we're all in, the global pandemic really kind of changed some things for us and changed some of our fundraising abilities. So we've had to cancel a number of them and have really looked um, to our resource development coordinator and other staff to be more creative in how we services to the community. So I thank you for the opportunity to share with you um, during this service today. Thank you for being here. Well, um, one of the questions that I have is, um, what are some of the new ways that you're fundraising? Or are you still trying to figure that part out? No, uh, well, they've, they've done a few. They did, um, we had to cancel our strikeout sexual assault bullet that normally happens in April during sexual assault awareness month. But um, what, uh, a group came up with, with they did a virtual 4.5k run mm. so um, people bought t-shirts and really you could do whatever you want whether they watch tv you would <laughs> whatever but they chose that 4.5 because um, we are approaching our 45th anniversary of providing sir lincoln and lancaster county so oh. I think that was kind of a different way to get people involved. We also did just finish up our Stop to Stop Family Violence. So right. that's where local merchants will get a percentage of their sale, the very 
very successful and also a chance for us to promote those local, especially during this extra difficult time for all of us. Well, that's cool. I didn't know about the Strikeout Bolathon. I'll have to look for that next year and see if you are able to do that then. Another question I have um, that I think others will also be interested to hear about is to know what opportunities there are if somebody wanted to volunteer. Do I understand correctly that one of the ways would be to get trained to be on the hotline? Are you able to volunteer to be a part of the hotline aspect or is that a paid position? Thank you for bringing that up, but because I really want to share that the heart and soul of our agency is volunteers. In normal times, we provide a volunteer training about three to four times a year of really helping people get get prepared to help us with the crisis line. Um, we're kind of looking toward maybe in the next in the next month or so doing something probably virtually just in volunteering please check our facebook page or our website or call and we can get you connected with our volunteer coordinator a great need and it's how we can continue to provide our 24-hour services sure and i'm i'm guessing that you do get funding from a few different places but everybody is stretched thin right now so we know how important it is to to help if we can through the share the plate program I think you know this, but our, our members vote on who receives the offering plate once a month, and we narrow it down to 10. We generally get between 30 and 40 organizations that are nominated. As I mentioned to you before, Voices of Hope is, is high profile, so to speak, and, and people generally know what it is, but um, we also have folks that are new to the community, so I appreciate you doing a little more in depth about what the organization does. One thing I can't remember is, was the name changed somewhere around 10, 15 years ago? It, you, yes, you are correct. It used to be the Rape Spouse Abuse Crisis Center, and then the name was changed in 2007, about 13 yeah, years ago. So, and really, really that just came about as it, it was time, it was time to have a name that more accurately described our services and who we were providing those services to. Right. And we really look, we look to the community and former clients and current clients to help us, you know, come up with that name. So. Yes, I, I have known quite a few people who have either volunteered or worked for your organization and speak very highly of you. But how long have you worked there? I have worked there. I came to I came to the old Rape Spouse Abuse Crisis Center in 1988. So it's been a it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been very much a privilege. And did you start in the position that you're in now? No, I started as um, oh I don't even remember what the, it was. A, it was a part time grant funded temporary position. Of our, I was a liaison to the county attorney and to the uh, local police department and the sheriff's department. Cool. And how many employees does the Voices of Hope have, about approximately? Yeah, I, sure. I think right now we have about 20 paid employees, um, about 17 of us being full time, providing direct service, um, and then we have an administrative assistant and a grant bookkeeper accountant and some child care providers when we're able to sure. be in the office so but again I can't stress enough that volunteers are how we do this so of course some organizations do a special drive around the holidays are there going to be any things that are happening for Christmas this year or any of the winter holidays that you know of? just in the starting to talk about this and I'm I might not be the best person okay. to do. So I think that, thing, that things on our Facebook page, that it, it, may, it may be looking a little bit different, where in the past people would want to maybe adopt a family during these winter holidays. This may look like, even though people like to buy the gifts and do the shopping, it may be gift cards. And sure. So the family themselves can do get what they need and buy what they need. So sure. I, I mean, I, I know we will do something and that our community will respond well as they always do, but I don't know exactly how that's going to look. Sure. Well, thank you. I, I wasn't sure um, how far out you plan, but right now it's pretty hard to plan for too far out. I can, I can tell you that we experienced that as well. So 
let me think if there's anything else um i guess i, I want to make sure that people know how to find you and so i know that there is a website and a facebook page would you like to share what those are and also maybe the hotline number so that we can we can put that up on the screen on the video also but um perhaps that is uh, information that people will want to have at their fingertips if they need to share it with others. Sure. Line is 402-475-7273. And our web www.voicesofhopelincoln.org. Okay. And I think and then you Facebook, can just find us on Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. The address, you know, is 2545 and <laughs> unclear if there's anyone there, so. Sure. Yes, we, we aren't uh, really housing our office at this point either, so we, we tell people it's not the best place to try to find us right now. You leave messages on the voicemail, we're only checking right. once a week, so. Well, I certainly um, applaud your work and the organization, but also you yourself. You've worked there now for 30, over 30 years. It's apparent that you really care about your clients and you care about the work, so I, I want to thank you for providing that to our community and and also for being here with us today to share more about Voices of Hope so that we know what's out there available to us and that we can help support you in any way we can. So thanks for being here. I appreciate that. Yeah.